Okay, today's gonna be a little different. I'm actually gonna slow down my speech today because I've been looking at my videos and I've been like, kinda hype. So I'm gonna chill out a little bit today. Well, today we're gonna talk about camera. Cameras is inherent every single time I actually post a, a cool photo or something. To, uh, people ask me, hey, what camera do you use? So you know, my answer is, depends on the situation, right? You can't use one tool for, for everything. Just like you can't use one rod for, for all your fishing. There's always a situation where one tool is gonna be better than the other. It's the same thing with cameras, right? But uh, I'm gonna go over uh, the tools that, that I normally take on a fishing specific trip where I'm not really concentrating on catching fish. Because if you notice, if, if, if I'm actually fishing, the photos are pretty, you know, half-assed. If I'm actually there concentrating to get the image, the photo's spectacular, but you never see me holding up a fish because most of the time I'm not fishing. So just because I take pictures of fish does not mean I'm actually out there having fun and fishing and all that stuff. Don't get me wrong, it's better than uh, being in a cubicle, but I'm definitely not fishing when I'm getting like, those cool images, right? Um, holding up a fish is one thing, but getting the action shot, that's a whole different ball game. And that's why I got a whole arsenal of products and cameras and all this stuff here that I'm about to go over with you guys. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to show you this Pelican 1600. It's a huge case. I probably, it probably weighs 50 pounds by the time I put all my stuff in it, but it's worth every penny. I mean, if you value your, your, your cameras, the Pelican case, I don't know what else is better. You know, It comes with the foam filling, but if you're gonna take it seriously and have it for a long time, you're better off getting the Velcro padding because you can configure it any way you want. And on top of that, it doesn't, the foam doesn't disintegrate and start getting into your equipment and stuff like that. It's, you know, just Velcro. Okay, so let's, let's open this sucker up. Um, the first piece of equipment is one of my favorite equipment, which is a, it's a fast camera along with a fast lens, which is a Nikon D3. I've had this since like 2008, very fast. I use it on pretty much, uh, on pretty much every shoot. I'm trying to get the, the action shot. And it's really good also with, uh, with portraits and stuff like that, you know, for, for weddings and getting up close. This, this is a 70 to 200 millimeter 2.8, very fast lens, along with the D3, which is a uh, very fast camera. It's, you know, like I said, it's been out since 2008. There's some other ones that are faster, but still, this one does fine, so I've got no reason to actually upgrade. You can see I can go, oh, that's in single, single shutter mode, so it's not gonna be very fast, is it? So if you go, you hold it down. As you can see, if fish jumps, but you can't just shoot and spray, right? Because uh, you got, still gotta have focus. You know, you can't just go there, click, and, and get the shot. You actually gotta sit there and hold it like this, and just wait till the fish jump and hopefully you get the right focus. And of course, with practice, you'll get a better, uh, you get a better timing of when the fish is gonna jump and how to set your camera and all that. Again, this is Nikon 7200 with the Nikon D3, which is, I keep it just like this for action shots, right? Uh, the next camera that I usually carry with me is a, um, is a uh, is an, is another Nikon. It's a Nikon D300S. This is a, a crop sensor, not the full frame, but that's okay. Crop sensor is just fine. And I have like um, I usually have the 17, the, the 17, the 55. Yeah, the 1755 Nikon 2.8 on there is. Um, very fast lens, and I use it for grip and grins and decent fish, it's very sharp. This one I have on here, this is a Tokina 1116, really wide, good for landscapes and stuff like that. I really like this lens. Uh, I don't like it for, for, for the grip and grin shot though, it just kind of distorts to the point where I really didn't, doesn't really like it. But it's good for like landscape shots and you know, uh, polling and getting the whole boat because it's pretty wide, 11 to 16 millimeter. The D300S is very fast, very fast. You see, very fast, not as fast as the D3, 
but the D300S is very fast, so it's good for action. If you can have only one camera, this, is, uh, this would be a good camera to get. It's fast, it's uh, uh, sharp, uh, what else? Uh, very durable, it has an alloy body and weather sealed, so pretty good camera. It's called, they, they consider it a prosumer camera, so that's my second body. My third body is the, the Nikon D7000. Uh, this is a pretty darn good camera. It's not weather sealed, it's, it's always an alloy body, but it's not as quite as fast as the other cameras, but you know what? It does the job if you, uh, it's a little small. You see, it's not as fast, but for the grip and grin shot, it's phenomenal. I have one here that's 24 to 70. I don't use this a, a bunch, but I use it for like portrait shots and stuff like that. I just got done with a uh, portrait gig over in Tampa, so I still have this lens on here. So I usually don't even have the 2470 with me. It's a 2.8 lens too, it's really fast, good and low light. And the D300, I'm sorry, the D7000 also does really good video, okay? It's one of the few, one of the cameras that came out that has manual settings and stuff like that for video mode for Nikon. For a long time, Canon, kind of like surpassed Nikon as far as like, uh, as far as like video and stuff is concerned. And you can't blame them because Canon does have a whole video department, right? So Nikon is just catching up these days, but for still photography, I definitely prefer the Nikon brand just because for the ease of use of the controls and stuff. And the image quality, as you know, you can't be beat. And you know, the, 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 the noise, the noise and the the noise algorithm in the Nikon for higher ISO seems to be a little bit better than the Canon. Uh, let's see. Oh, another lens I like to use is the fisheye lens. The one I like to use is this, uh, it's a Tokina 1017. It's not a very expensive lens, but it's a very sharp lens. It's I also used in my underwater housing as well when I was using it for, for my underwater housing. Uh, on the Nikon D300 before the Bahamian government or the Bahamian Airlines smashed my housing up so I haven't really been using it much. Uh, this is, a, like I said, the Tokina 1017. You like that fish eye effect. And it's actually pretty decent also for a grip and grin because it makes the fish look really big. Of course, I have my lens cleaner. I also always carry with me three flashes, right? Uh, especially if I'm doing some kind of wedding gigs or portrait gigs, uh, one flash is never enough because you never know if it's going to break, run out of juice and stuff like that too. So you cannot give anybody an excuse, oh my equipment failed, you come back later, that's just not going to work. Especially when you're in water, nobody's going to listen to you. Um, for the flash, I also carry, usually carry with me a box of, of fresh batteries. I try to make all my lens uh, 77 millimeter uh, filters, right? That way all I have to carry with me is one polarized filter. On bright days, this is a must. It just makes everything look greener and bluer and you can see through the water. Good polarized filter is a must. This is 77 millimeters. It works on my 7200. It works on my Tokina 1117. It works on my I mean, 11 to 16. It works on my uh, 2470. And it also works on my 17 to 55. Another item is the, if I like to get really close to a subject and my 200 millimeters just isn't enough, is this Nikon teleconverters, right? It's a 1.4. I also have a 1.7 I don't have with me right now, but I, I, I don't go to the 2.0 because I used to have the 2.0 and it just cuts out too much light. It degrades the quality, so I actually sold my 2.0 teleconverter because outdoors you really can't control it and it is what it is. Like right now, the lighting is perfect, a 2.0. I just didn't, didn't really like the quality of it, right? What else, what else? Oh, another thing I carry with me is a mess of memory cards, okay? Memory cards, memory cards, memory cards. I've actually had several memory cards go bad on me before, so I always carry with me a lot of memory cards. Um, compact flash and SD cards. That's pretty much it for what's in the Pelican case for the most part. Close this sucker down. Of course, one of the 
one of the most coolest shots that I do that people enjoy is the underwater shots, right? You get in the water with the fish, especially when the water's pretty clear. So you're probably interested in my underwater housing setup, right? I used the Icolite, the Icolite underwater housing setup, which is this right here, this big bulky thing, right? This sucker weighs a lot. I used to have this on a uh, Nikon D300 until March when I went to the Bahamas and they thrashed it around and, and it got destroyed. So when I upgraded, I decided to go with uh, the housing for the my 7D, a Canon 7D, because of the video factor, right? Uh, it's also higher megapixel and it's a little faster too than Canon 7D. And if you got a 7D, they actually just came out with a firmware upgrade last month, to, so you check it out and you actually have some better um, function, ISO, uh, audio, manual monitoring, all kinds of little cool stuff, and it's free. Well anyways, here's the housing. I like housing, as you can see, very heavy. I used the 17, 10 to 17 Tokina that's made for the Nikon on it. As you can see, it's a, it's got a, it's a fish eye. I can change the zoom right here. Lots of buttons, lots of buttons. But it's heavy, but it's heavy. You, know, you probably wouldn't want to use this for surfing photography, but for diving and doing stabilizing, the heavier it is, the more stable your image is going to be, especially for video purposes. So this is a Canon 7D and an Ica-like housing with an eight inch dome, okay? You need an eight inch dome if you're using a fish eye of any sort. And you want the fish eye because you know, the, the, the debris factor is, is huge underwater. Even though you can see in the water, once you get in, the, from point to the subject to the actual lens, there's a lot of debris that you do not see. And the closer you can get to your subject, the better. That's why you want a wide angle lens. Let me put this sucker back before I drop it in the water. Of course, I made the mistake of not putting one of these things back before and scratch my dome all up. And the dome alone is like $400. So, you don't want to mess it up. Of course, I always carry with me fins, right? So fins and, um, and a mask. Not this, this thing is very special. I just went by some, some inexpensive uh, dive shop in the Keys and picked one of these up. Um, just make sure the mask fit, fit your face, right? Uh, the reason I don't use scuba because it's just too much of a hassle, right? Because you're not in the water all the time. So you're only in the water when the moment happens. Since I don't set up anything, I don't put fishing coolers under that stuff, I do it as it happens. So scuba would be totally out of the question, right? Anyways, that's, that's pretty much it. And like I said, if you have any kind of expensive equipment, get one of these sturdy pelican cases. Yes, it can be bulky. Yes, it can be a pain in the butt sometimes, but man, I've been in some rough seas and things have been floating on the deck of the boat. It seals, it's tough, it's been banged around, and I've had this thing since 2008, and it's still kicking with pretty much no issue. It's been in the sun, been in the salt water, travel with me everywhere. So, if you're into it, the Pelican case is it, and that's pretty much for all my gear. Well, I hope you enjoy my explanation of what I bring and what gear I bring. So that helps you a bunch on your decision what kind of gear you want to buy. If you've got any questions, just shoot me an email. And that's about it. See ya.